How's it going everyone? This is Mustard here and I have another hardware review for you today. The folks over at Thrustmaster decided to send me their newest controller which launched today in fact. And uh, here it is. It is the eSwap Pro Controller by Thrustmaster. Once more I am on my webcam unfortunately it's the highest quality thing I own so the video quality isn't going to be perfect but uh, it should be more than enough to get the job done but I'm sure you guys can hear me just fine. This is their newest controller. Uh, it is for PS4. I have this and it's a modular controller so you can swap around all the features and all the different buttons and stuff like that but we'll get into that very soon. Um, just quickly I want to say a huge shout out to Thrustmaster for sending this controller my way. This is designed to be the controller that helps pad players kind of like take their game to the next level that really is the idea behind it uh, and myself being you know a prominent pad player and a competitive guy uh, they sent me one of these to kind of look over and uh, give an honest review on and that's what you're about to see I have been using this quite a bit over the last week or so I used it at our last local in, in Leicester so I've, I've had some offline experience as well as online and uh, I have quite a lot to say about it there is a lot of features to this controller which I'll do my best to cover but uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this. Let's get down right to it. So first things first, I thought it would be best to show you what the controller is included with in the box. So you know at minimum what you'll be expecting. Uh, this is the box, as you can see. It's a slightly magnetic container, so this just pops right out. And uh, first things first, you will notice immediately the controller itself is what you see. It's, you know, of course, it's quite a nice snazzy looking box. Uh, well protected, which is definitely important for something like this. We all know how um, prone to, I suppose, minor damage controllers can be, so it's nicely packaged. Uh, this is the controller itself. I'll quickly take this out. It's a very snug fit, so you almost have to pop it out as opposed to a slight pull, but, you know, decent sized controller, what you'd expect. We'll put this to one side and talk a bit more about that. Uh, and then it comes with this accessory box, which again is also quite a tight fit, so let me just quickly ease this out without <laughs> you know, almost like feeling like you don't want to break it but it is uh, definitely a lot more sturdy than that uh, this box here comes with a very nicely packaged uh, controller cable as the whole point of this controller one of the big features about it is um, it is only really a wired pad it will not function unless it is plugged in it comes with a very heavy duty uh, cable here you know micro USB one end USB the other uh, but this, you know, it's material cable, you know, very sturdy, very long. You know, I'd, I'd stretch it out, but I wouldn't be able to pick up exactly just how long the cable is. Uh, and it's also included a, a small screwdriver, which is for the modular features of the controller, which we will talk about very soon, as it is one of the biggest things about this controller. Also, just quickly before we move on, something I forgot to mention, uh, you can lift out this compartment where your controller and cable are, uh, as there is a little label here underneath this little... Uh, silicon packet here uh, to signify that the instructions on how to work the controller and in terms of like how to take the parts out generally how it works how to link it up to a PC to do its thing uh, the instructions are behind here they're, they're, there's two different pamphlets um, one is more about just the strap modular compartment and then the other one is more about the technical side of things so make sure you don't miss those they are just underneath this compartment here when you lift out where the controller normally is so here is the controller itself. As you can see, it's relatively normal size. It's rather heavy for a controller, which I personally always kind of really do prefer. It feels like it's built to last. It feels like it's got good weight to it. Um, but the main point of the controller, uh, you know, you'll notice it has all your, your, your typical layout in terms of you have a D-pad, you have your two thumbsticks, uh, PlayStation button, options, share, your know, touchpad button, um, two triggers either side, LB, RB, right trigger, left trigger. Uh, as well as your port for the cable. You can notice that you might not be able to see it on the camera, but it goes in quite deep, so the cable will be you know, nice embedded in there. Uh, and of course you have your face buttons. Uh, these aren't buttons as you will feel from a traditional PlayStation 4 controller. These are very much kind of individual, um, kind of precise, quite crispy buttons, uh, which does take a little bit of getting used to, but I think it makes them really responsive. Um, they do have a long lifetime. The, the box boasts 5 million presses uh, across them, which you know is, is, qu is quite the claim, but uh, I have no reason to doubt that from my play so far. Um, the D-pad is... Well, it's, it's, it's not for individual buttons, it's not mechanical, it's very much kind of you know, the, the piece of plastic, more traditional D-pad that we're kind of used to. But uh, the real point of this controller is it is what they call a modular controller. And those of you watching might be like, what's he talking about? What does that mean? Uh, let me show you. Every compartment of this controller, see if I can do this live, is 
removable. So if I want to move out this thumbstick and then for example, let's say I'm an Xbox player and I want to swap around where this thumbstick is with the D-pad and I want the D-pad to be down here using the screwdriver that it came with. You use the, uh, the rear end of the screwdriver, put it into the D-pad like this and with a slight pull, the compartment will come out like that. Uh, the connections you will notice inside there uh, haven't been used much as I haven't really been swapping them around too much. But uh, everything is pretty much magnetic in this controller and that's how it does it. So let's say you wanted to move the D-pad down to somewhere a bit more familiar as an Xbox player. There you go, it just snaps straight in and it's the same thing for the thumbstick. So if you were an Xbox player and that's more what you wanted from this, there you go, the layout is more familiar to you, the D-pad is down, you know, in, in, in the, the bottom part of the controller and there you go, it's a bit more familiar to you straight away. Um, these side grips as well also just pop off again it's all magnetic they were just with like the slightest bit there you go I didn't even push that in and it's like snapped back into place firmly um, does mean you have to be quite delicate with it as with anything like this that's magnetic as opposed to like screwed in if you you know if you're a bit more of a an angrier gamer and you're, you're you know, a bit of a prone to salt and taking it out on peripherals I definitely were, would recommend being very careful with this as you don't want things to go flying off even though they definitely are secured you don't want to give them any reason to uh, to come loose like that you can also I'll show you so I can get nice and up close to the camera here if I can look at the one back here you might not be able to see it but on the uh, the rear side of these actually it's on the back of them there you go see if you notice there is a port for the screwdriver where even even the triggers will be able to just pop right off and replace which means that if you do damage particular parts of the controller you can literally just pay for a replacement part as opposed to just buying a new controller um, and that brings me to what I think is my favorite point over the controller being modular is the fact that even though the base cost of the controller is a lot more than you'll notice from a standard control pad, your upkeep costs are considerably lower. Whereas let's say you're a fighting game player and you wear out the D-pad beyond all recognition, you can just pop online and just buy the replacement part pack that comes with the D-pad and it will cost you way less than having to buy a whole new controller. And we've all been there, we've all gone through pads over time, they do wear down over use. And modular pads like this, as long as the core fundamentals of the controller are built to last, that will be something that will save you a lot of money in the long run. Now, let's have a look and get into how it plays and how it feels. So when it comes to using the controller in real gameplay, uh, I have pretty much only really been playing Mortal Kombat 11 with it. I am pretty much a, a die-hard default PlayStation 4 controller user when it comes to MK or the fighting games that I'm competitive with, with the exception of I'll play Sam show on a stick. Pretty much everything else is, is controller for me. And like I said, I'm pretty much only really default PS4 pad. So using anything that wasn't that did take some getting used to, but the more I used the eSwap controller, I found myself really getting into the groove of it. Uh, like I said before, I, I find the buttons incredibly responsive. Like these are some of if, if not like the best face buttons that i've i've felt on a controller and i've been playing competitive fighting games back and since like kind of the xbox 360 days um so i've used a lot of different pads from then to now and i i can say that i do believe that these are the most responsive face buttons that i've used so far um the triggers feel like they've got some decent weight to them so again i, I feel like with really precise inputs um especially in a game like mk which has a block button i find it really responsive and good for that the um the bumpers i find again the same as you would on almost an uh they're very xbox controller-esque i find the the bumpers where again they're very clicky very precise they're definitely not the same kind of buttons that you'll find in a ps4 pad but i, I still find them just just as fine all the same um but for me the d-pad is the one that i found really different so you'll notice i'm going to press with like the slightest the slightest tap of force and i'm not getting inputs because you really have to be quite deliberate with this um which again helps like if if, if you're quite heavy-handed or I, I would say um you know quite you know really into it when, when you're using your movements this this is good for i, I suppose like quite heavy-handed players which i i always kind of have been um it does mean that i guess that I, I get less kind of like accidental inputs like if i'm going from a crouching state and i'm trying to move either left or right i find that again if like i have to be really quite deliberate with my thumb to get the movement which i definitely prefer i have been prone to kind of like you know going from a crouching state and you know trying to move forward or trying to move back and almost like you know getting a jump that I didn't want at a bad time or something like that. And I feel that the, 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 the kind of like the, the, the steadiness or the steadiness, I should say, of the D-pad um, has kind of meant that I don't really get that as much. Uh, it's worth pointing out as well that on the back of the controller, there are four additional buttons down here that um, 
you can map those to pretty much the triggers if you want so you know if that's something that you find more comfortable that's an option too uh, i honestly can't say that i actually use them at all for me it's very much kind of just you know what you see is what you get with the buttons and that works just fine for me but uh it definitely will take some adjusting to if you do find yourself getting this controller don't be deterred right off the bat um by the fact that the d-pad is a bit heavier or uh you know of course the, the buttons are slightly different because it is different to the norm but that's kind of what you want when you get into it, which is, you know, I'm not going to say it's necessarily a good or a bad thing. I think it's kind of down to your personal preference as to how you want your controller to be. Uh, but I found it just fine for MK11. You know, I'm a big guy kind of just sitting in the, you know, sitting in training mode and doing generic standard combos with, with different characters to kind of really get a feel for it. And I've, I've really enjoyed the aspect uh, of, of learning this controller, uh, especially right. There's been a new content update for MK11. So there's been, there's been a lot to learn, a lot to do. And I've kind of been doing most of it with this. And I, I can say that I've got no complaints so far. Um, I'm normally quite critical when it comes to uh, new software and new hardware like this. So uh, I definitely am impressed. But uh, I feel like it's definitely going to come down to how how much you're willing to deviate away from the default controllers. Because this definitely, I can say, does not feel like either the default Xbox pad or the default PS4. This does feel like its own thing. It is going to work across the board. So finally, when it comes to, I suppose, the nitty gritty features of the controller, uh, a really cool thing about the eSwap controller is the ability to fully customize, I suppose, a profile of a, of a button config, a controller layout within the controller itself using a piece of software that comes with the controller. When you plug it into a PC, it will install what they call the Thrust Mapper PC software. Uh, you can see these like small images on the side of the box. I'll, I'll pretty much explain what this is quickly because it's much easier than kind of zooming in on, on the small text because of my webcam. But it pretty much lets you customize specific layouts to the controller and save them onto the controller itself. So it saves you having to kind of like change, you know, from different fighting games, different layouts going in the options menu, which I know isn't really a huge inconvenience, but if you really don't like swapping from game to game, this controller lets you create your own profiles of different layouts, what the buttons do and what, pretty much what the buttons are and standard, I suppose, config swapping. Uh, you can save them within the controller itself, which does save you a little bit of time if that's what you want to do. If you want to play anything that aren't fighting games on it as well, it does let you customize exactly how sensitive the thumbsticks are and I suppose the more specific stuff that you'd get from thumbstick heavy games like first person shooters and stuff like that. But uh, I thought it was a cool little feature. I personally don't find myself using it, but again, if you really want to make the most out of the controller, it is there, it is simple to use, and it's all included within the controller itself. So that pretty much covers all the features of the Thrustmaster eSwap Pro Controller and I must say that, um, I've, again, I've been using it for about a week and I do like it. Uh, I, I find it quite impressive. Like it, it, I really like the quality. It really feels like it's built to last. And again, I know that's really a big thing with fighting games in terms of you do have to be quite heavy handed. You do tend to go through pads quite a lot. If, if you're a serious player, you'll find yourself kind of swapping your controller a couple of times a year. Um, not everyone, but I know that's, that's generally the thing that happens. But uh, I really like it. Um, even back when I used to compete, I used to use modular controllers if it was an option, because again, it's much cheaper to replace a D-pad of a controller if that's an option, as opposed to the whole pad. Uh, but I really like it. Uh, again, thanks to Thrustmaster for sending me this to have a look over. And I must say, I, I feel like it will take some getting used to if you really are like attached to the default controllers for the PS4 or the Xbox One. But if you're looking for something different, you just don't find that either pad is doing it for you. I really do recommend giving this a go. It is rather expensive as far as controllers go, and it is brand new. But again, if you're going to be using it for years to come, you're going to save money on the fact that you're replacing individual parts as opposed to uh, the full controller. But uh, I like it. I would rate it rather high. I will be using it myself outside of this video for some, some time because I really have been enjoying it. And uh, I want to see exactly how long this is going to last because I tend to hit my buttons pretty hard. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see how that goes. One more time, I will be putting the link for where you can buy it if you want to get this yourself in the description of this video. And I'll put it on the screen also throughout. And uh, again, thanks very much to Thrustmaster for sending this my way. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and take care of yourselves. I'll see you next time. Peace out.